Welcome to the Winning in Business podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Rissi, and I love talking to business professionals, leaders, and entrepreneurs who are winning in business. Are you ready to reach your next level of success? If so, join us on the Winning in Business podcast as I interview entrepreneurs, business professionals, and leaders who share how they've risen to success. Before we begin, go ahead, hit subscribe and the notification button so you'll be notified each time a new episode is released. Plug in and settle in. You're about to be inspired to rise up to your next level of success. Welcome to another episode of Winning in Business. This is Kelly Rissi. I'm your host. And today we are going to talk about conquering procrastination. (laughs) So as a, as a coach and working with entrepreneurs, business owners, and really high performers, um, procrastination can be a common obstacle. And we know that when we do procrastinate, it hinders our productivity and it delays our progress really towards our goals. And right now we are at the end of quarter one. So we wanna make sure that um, we eliminate the procrastination. We need to conquer it so that we can move forward through Q2, Q3, and Q4. So, you know, whether you're a seasoned professional, seasoned entrepreneur, just understanding the root cause can really help you. And it can help us um, just stay focused and motivated, right? So let's look at really understanding procrastination. Procrastination is the act of delaying or postponing tasks. And often it's due to the feelings of anxiety, overwhelm, fear of failure, and how it shows up is avoidance, distraction, and even perfectionism. Perfectionism is normal when you're um, really pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone, which as business owners, as um, entrepreneurs, as high achievers, we are constantly pushing ourselves outside of our comfort zone every day, all the time. And I love what Adam Grant says in his book, Hidden Potential. He states that procrastinating is not avoiding effort. It's avoiding the unpleasant feeling that the activity stirs up. So we're not avoiding the task. We're avoiding the emotion or the belief that goes with that task. So take a minute And remember the last time you procrastinated on something. Is it a project? Um, You know, was it picking up the phone and calling somebody? Was it creating something? So remember that. Remember that time you procrastinated and ask yourself these questions. What triggered you to procrastinate? So kind of if you can rewind and go back. What underlying factors contributed the procrastinating? Was it fear of failure? Was it lack of clarity? Was it perfectionism? Think about really the underlying factors that contributed to it. And then how did you feel? What emotion can you attach to that? Were you overwhelmed, anxious? Did you feel insecure? And is this a pattern for you? And I want to go back a minute to just how did you feel? Because what I've also noticed through coaching high achievers is that we don't like to talk about our emotions, nor are we comfortable naming them, right? Because we push them down, because we ignore them, because we're like, I'm powering through or I'm procrastinating, one of the two, right? We don't often have words for them. Um, you know, something that I, that I always give my clients is an emotions wheel, Because when you can look at the emotions, then you can name them, right? It's just coming up with the names of them, especially if you grew up in a family that never really talked about emotions. All right. So next, thinking about, is this a pattern for you? So every time you start to feel this way or every time you do this, you know, X, Y, Z, do you start procrastinating? And so thinking about that also, you know, naming your emotions is a great step towards the self-awareness. And having self-awareness around your emotions is emotional intelligence. And as a business owner, entrepreneur, as a leader, 
we must be really proficient in emotional intelligence. We should always be working on increasing that. Actually, increasing your emotional intelligence is more important than increasing your skills in things. So um, that is definitely something that, you know, that I work on with on my clients is because when you can improve your emotional intelligence, that's your awareness, that's your regulation of your emotions, uh, being able to identify the emotions of others and being able to really like help control a room full of people at different emotional levels. That's that's how you improve your um, emotional intelligence. And emotional intelligence is directly related to motivation. And so if your EQ is low, your motivation might be low, causing you to procrastinate more, right? So it's all kind of goes tied hand in hand. Okay, so going back to the naming your emotions, um, the other thing, if you really check in with your body and see how you feel, once you like it, it will naming your emotions will help you connect the visceral reaction of your body to an emotion. So, for example, when I feel anxious, my mind races, my breathing might increase a little bit and my upper body tends to tense up. Well, of course, I want to avoid that reaction in my body, right? So if I want to avoid that, our brain is always trying to keep us safe. It's always trying to make us feel comfortable. If it's trying to avoid that, then what am I going to do? I'm going to procrastinate. And this is where, um, you know, procrastinators love deadlines. Why do we love a good deadline? Because when there's a date and a time attached to the task, you push through the emotions and the discomfort. You will be like, I like have to do it now. Here we go. And then you push through it and you move forward. So you you really don't have a choice to sit in the emotion. Okay, if that makes sense, you just kind of move through it and go to the task. So the good news is, is if you survive being uncomfortable under pressure, which we all do survive being under com being com uncomfortable under pressure, you will also make it through the discomfort working on the task earlier. <laughs> right? That's something to remind ourselves. Like, we can make it through this emotional discomfort when there's a deadline, a date and a time attached to it, which means that if we actually start working on it two weeks earlier, we can also survive that discomfort. Just have to sit in it for just a minute, right? And just get comfortable with feeling that uncomfortableness. All right. The next thing that you can do is make sure that you are breaking your tasks into manageable steps. So one effective strategy of overcoming procrastination is to break larger tasks or projects into smaller, more manageable steps. This will reduce those feelings of overwhelm and actually make you get started earlier. And so what that entails is really just creating a detailed action plan with specific tasks and deadlines created to them. Then you can prioritize them based on the urgency and celebrate those small wins along the way so that you maintain your mo your momentum that you have going, right? We love being rewarded and we can reward ourselves. We don't need to wait for anybody else to do it. So reward yourself along the way when you have done the little tiny tasks even when there's a whole bunch more tasks waiting for you, reward yourself for the little ones. All right, another thing that you can do is adopt the two-minute rule. So the two-minute rule was made popular by productivity expert David Allen, and he states that if a task takes less than two minutes to complete, you should do it immediately. So you look at it. If it's simple, you need to do it and you need to do it fast right then immediately. That can also help you build momentum and overcome the stagnation of procrastination. Um, then you can also look at adopting Mel Robbins five second rule. So she likes to she teaches us to count down backwards. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And whatever it is, then you need to go. You get five seconds and then off you go. So those are, you can do the two minute or you can do the five second rule, or maybe you need to do both. Maybe you need to count down 
five, four, three, two, one to get into doing, you know, the small two minute things, or maybe that's just for the big things for you. All right. And then cultivate a growth mindset. So we hear about this all the time, adopting a growth mindset. And the importance of this is that when we believe that we have the ability to learn and grow, it will help us combat perfectionism and fear of failure. And those are the root causes of procrastination for most entrepreneurs. It's that whole fear of failure thing, right? We don't want to look stupid. We don't want to fail. But, you know, challenges and failures are an opportunity for growth and learning. And when we think about it that way, instead of avoiding the obstacle, when we really look at it as feedback that can inform our future actions and decisions, it is literally a no brainer to get started. Like if we're like, hey, the sooner I get this done, the sooner I can have, you know, feedback on this to, um, that will help me with future actions and decisions. Well, that's, that's a whole, that's a great way to look at it. Uh, and so like kind of just reframing them and changing your perspective on challenges and failures to see them as positive, then with repetition of doing that over and over of like changing your perspective on that, you, you will overcome procrastination. You can overcome it. It is doable. Uh, so start acknowledging and, ex and celebrating your failures, right? Bring them to the forefront, acknowledge and celebrate them. And as you keep doing that, you will get more and more used to failing. And failing is okay. It gives us growth. All right. And then the last thing is leverage accountability and support. So we know that accountability can be a powerful motivator for overcoming procrastination. Find yourself an accountability partner, a mentor, a coach, right? This is why people hire coaches is because they know that they will have the accountability by their next coaching session, whatever their action steps are, they need to have them done. So it's that type of accountability that you are looking for. Um, someone that who can give you the, um, you know, I like to say the kick in the pants when you need it and the, um, you know, be your cheerleader along the way as you're doing things. You need a good balance of both. Also, sharing your goals and your progress with others, like doing that regular check-in on your progress, will also help you stay on track. Uh, we know that celebrating successes together and offering support and encouragement, like when faced with challenges, when we when you have that community of support, when you have mentors, coaches, just really people building you up in that same, in, in your community that can lift you up, that can help you out of things, that makes a huge difference. If you are sitting there and you are procrastinating and you are by yourself, that is when we start to do the spiral, the spiral down, the spiral down. And that's when we get more and more just into our thoughts, into our emotions, into the bleh of everything, instead of being able to lift and come out of it quickly. So, I hope that you found some value in what we talked about today, because these are powerful. Um, as entrepreneurs, we need to let go of the procrastination and start moving forward with momentum. Y'all, I don't know about you, but just for me as a business owner, first quarter went fast. And guess what? Second quarter is also going to go by fast. We do not have time to procrastinate. Every goal Every vision, every dream that you have, like it is out there and taking small steps, small steps is really what you need to do to conquer it. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed this episode of Winning a Business. I thank you so much for tuning in and I would love for you to, um, you know, share this, share this with any proclaimed procrastinators that you know so that you can conquer it. And if you're a procrastinator yourself, find yourself that accountability partner. Um, so here's what we talked about today. Just a quick recap. Understand your triggers. Name your emotions. Have the courage to move forward through the discomfort of your emotions. Break tasks into manageable steps. Adopt that growth mindset. 
and leverage support and accountability for you. And when you do that, you can overcome procrastination and unlock your full potential. All right, that is it for this episode of Winning in Business. I will see you next week for our next episode. Have a great one and continue to rise up and live. Thank you for being a part of the Winning in Business podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to rise up to your next level of success, but are worried about increased stress, time for work and yourself and your family, not to mention being exhausted, I'd like to invite you to a complimentary strategy call where I'll show you how you can do it all. I'll help you reclaim time, keep your sanity, handle the chaos with ease, and move to the next level of success that you deserve and desire. I hope you found value in listening today. Please always leave your comments, feedback, or questions. We check them all. I want you to continue winning in business and reach your next level of success. See you next time.